<laughs> I think getting back in the swing of things, we're having an issue with the microphone. We had a couple devotionals go out that were a little quasi on the mic, so we're trying to adjust that as we go along, because if we just keep waiting until everything's perfect, we'll never have it done. <laughs> so praise the Lord. We're starting your day right. So if you can hear better without it crackling, God bless you. If it's doing that, then don't worry. The next one we record, we'll go ahead and fix that and keep adjusting it as we get back into the swing of things and doing this devotional videos, um, video devotionals daily, Monday through Friday, in trying to accomplish that which maybe someone else didn't give a chance to tell you about when you were a baby Christian or maybe you didn't hear at church, but God talks, really, and he can talk to you. And he can talk to you in your Bible as you read it and as you study it. That's one way of hearing God speak. God can speak to you audibly through your ears. That's why he created ears so you could hear. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. So in other words, Jesus said you should go to the place at some point in time where you can hear him. It's not just a question of reading him, but that's a good place to start. So you see... It's okay to say, well, you know, I hear God speak by reading the Bible. Because if you're terrified of hearing God speak, well, you know, hey, the children of Israel were the same way. You know, oh, Mo, he was going, hey, you know what? Man, you tell me that God's up on that mountain? Really? God. Like the creator of the universe. And he's like, yeah. Well, I want to see. Because unless I see, I ain't going to believe. So Mo goes tripping up the mountain, you know, and he finds a burning bush, and the bush spoke to him, and it was like, What? You want me to do what? Man, it's hot in here. There's a fire there, and it's burning up that bush. Okay, maybe it's not burning the bush. And you want me to take my sandals off? And I climbed all this way up? Man, it's, it's kind of hurting. That's not what he said. He literally, when God spoke to him, did what God said. <laughs> it scared the... G. Willikers out of him. And he literally fell into a personal relationship with God. You were intended, God has designed you to have a personal relationship with him, just like Moses. Maybe not taking off your sandals, Nikes, whatevers, but at some point in time, you're supposed to keep growing so you can talk to Jesus, Jesus talks to you. So another way to do it is through devotionals. Hey, God speaks through devotionals too. He speaks through circumstance. He speaks through the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. No, we're not a nirvana God in everything. But God uses things like donkeys to communicate. I mean, after all, you've seen Christian television. Does he use donkeys or not? Think about it. <laughs> Old Balaam had a mule, and we know what he was fueled by. <laughs> so anyways, if God needs to get a hold of you, I think he's got your number, and it ain't going to be on a Blackberry. But God uses technology. I'm one to say, hey, God could call you on the phone. Don't be surprised. This is God. Or he might say, this is Jesus. Wouldn't you be surprised? Know God's character. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 I believe Jesus tries to get us to sow a good seed by making a statement that is first. Let's try that again. Reading is believing, so to speak, but you got to read it right in order to believe it right. I believe Jesus tries to get us to sow a good seed by making a statement that he is first in our lives. In other words, he's first, everything else is second. I believe if we do that, we will receive more than we give up. I am tested in this way all the time. There have been many times when God has asked me to give my last, my only, and my all. Everything I had at the time. But every time I've done so, I have ended up better off than I was before. Offer your best to God today and you will see his character that he is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, the God who sees, the God Almighty. 
See Exodus 6.3. I know for myself in personal example, this time of having the devotionals postponed gave me a great opportunity to incorporate a newer camera, which is still, <laughs> it's still the ball sitting on a spike, so to speak, and it's got one little eye that says, I am Hal. No, it's not really. But literally, it's it's a better camera, you know, than it was before. And I had an old one that was been around for about five years, which was state of the art. It was an orbit sphere, but this one, an orbit sphere AF. <laughs> oh well. But now, you know, it works so much better, and the technology and the software has come together and meshed in such a way that I'm blessed because I gave up my old camera, and even gave up the time and everything for God to work on me to bring about inside, you know, so to speak, using my living room as a studio. I don't think it looks that bad, but then I see it every day. So, sometimes giving up what you treasure the most is what God desires to see if you love Him to the utmost. For myself, I used to give away in order to practice not being attached to the things of this world, anything that I love the most. And I wound up not having anything. <laughs> and if you could tell by that laughter, <laughs> I really did wind up with nothing. <laughs> I slept on the street. <laughs> I was under bridges. Man, I was like out by the river. <laughs> you know, I can't <laughs> but what I had, a lot of people don't. I had a personal relationship with Jesus and to this day people go, I think he's crazy. No, I wasn't. And I still not. God speaks. I know, because he did. It's not always so... Um, terrifying, but it's definitely... Holy... But in that personal relationship that God and I had, there were special places where I could go, like Jesus did in Gethsemane, and spend some time alone with God and find Him meeting me alone with me. Until you've experienced that, I can't really describe it. But you can find it if you go after it, if you're willing to give up in order to get. If you're, order, if you're willing to put in order your priorities, which is have a relationship with Jesus, that you hear Him speak, you see Him visibly, you can literally say, hey, whether in the body or not, I know not which, but that which I realized would be sinful to speak of, that whether it was in the body or whether it was a dream or a vision or whatever, but I went to the highest heavens and there saw things that it would be just, I can't even talk about. God wants you to walk away with Him. He wants you to walk with Him today. He wants you to know Him in a personal way. He doesn't want you to just say, you know, yeah, I believe and I'm religious and I put on my suit, you know, and I go Sunday morning and I do my thing. No, He wants you to be a religious idiot that says, hey, you know what, I talk to God and God talks to me, so you know what, <laughs> you know, take a hike, buddy. You know, I'm not listening to what you got to say because I already know the Word, you know. God gave me the Word. I read it. Now he tells me it, and I still read it, and it builds me up, and I'm not going to follow anything else, because, frankly, I know God. God knows me. Beyond that, let Jesus be. And you'll find that in developing your personal relationship first, he'll ask you to give up a lot. You may lose your wife. Yeah, you might. You might lose your children. Yes, you might. You might lose your job. You might lose your hair. Leave Greg out of this, Lori. <laughs> you might lose the things that you thought you loved. Your Harley. Your idols. You might lose even your life. But the gain of knowing Jesus 
nothing compares and everything fades far away once you start to remember and recall the first love that you had when the day you said, God, come into my heart. Take over my life. Live in me and let me live in you. And give me eternal life that I might follow you all the days of my life and that I would serve the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my being, with all my strength. And God, give me that love that I can know Jesus in a personal, intimate way. Cause me to be born again, not of the flesh, but of your spirit. For I know not what I pray, but God, give me this day what I ask of you. Hear what I say. God, be Lord of my life. Jesus, be in control. Spirit, fill me with your love. And let me come home to you in the end of this age. And in the time in between, let me declare your word, your truth, your life. For I lay down my life, and I die that you might live in me.